Hey everyone, welcome to The Roundtable with Vienna White, Season 1, Episode 61. I'm your host, Millie Rouge, from the band Vienna White here in Edmonton, Canada. This Roundtable is a Yeg Music production. I want to get started on introducing our guests for today. Our first guest is Wesley from Suit Up Soldier, based in Utah. So welcome, Wesley. Our second guest is Eka Laki from Amsterdam. So welcome, Eka. <laughs> I think, Eka, you are our very first guest from Amsterdam, I'm pretty oh. sure. So we're happy to have you on today. <laughs> it's gonna be a great time. Um, so my very first question for all of you, it's a very difficult question. It's very, very difficult. It's how has your day been going so far? That's all I wanna know. <laughs> uh, so Eka, for you, it's like close to 8 p.m., is that correct? Yeah. yeah okay, so your day's already been, been happening, right? So what'd you get up to today? <laughs> um, I don't know. Quite a lot and not that much at the same time, but uh, it was very nice weather because mm. if you know, and if you have been in Amsterdam and in Holland in general, you know that the summer is not really that great. Oh, so whenever we nice. have a okay. sunny weather, we go out and we enjoy this whole day. Yeah. So kind of mostly, yeah, I guess, enjoying the whole day and writing some music here and there. That's so awesome. To, and are uh, you kind of in like your own home studio that you have set up? Is that kind of what you yeah. got going on here? Cool. Be proud of having my own tiny home studio. So awesome. I have everything with myself. So trying mm -hmm. to not to waste my time going out and doing something like whenever yeah. I'm on the mood. Yeah. Going on, so. yeah. That's awesome to hear. Well, that's <laughs> great. Um, we're kind of similar to you here in Canada because when we have a nice day in the summer, we like really appreciate it because we only get like two months really of summer and then it's, it's winter oh. for basically... 10 months so you can understand me. <laughs> totally relate yeah we're like as soon as it's above a certain temperature we're like okay shorts out flip-flops on we're good to go so I totally understand um how about yourself Wesley how's your day been so far in Utah what's kind of going on in your world <laughs> uh, it's good so um we the past couple weeks have been a lot of late nights for the band we're trying to finish up our album right now and so that's awesome I woke up like 20 minutes before this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. <laughs> I was like up an hour ago, so I totally understand. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So you guys are recording kind of in that, well, I guess you're probably out of the kind of quarantine phase. You guys are slowly starting to return back to your kind of That's normal bit, lives. Yeah. yeah. So are you guys in studio recording? Are you recording at home? Yeah, um, mostly at home. Um, mm. I graduated uh, from BYU with a commercial music degree, I did mostly audio engineering and producing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And so my, I feel, you know, right at home, literally and figuratively mm -hmm. in the sense of <laughs> uh, in the industry, I just, I feel like my space is in the studio. So yeah, yeah. yeah, I built a little tiny home studio for myself as well. And this is kind of where we get the majority of our That's awesome. stuff done. And then we'll sometimes outsource things to other studios around town and other producers. Yeah. Yeah, that's great to hear. I always love hearing when musicians do DIY basically their own projects because I know it's just so expensive and it's so hard to record like full albums. Like, yeah, maybe one or two songs isn't very expensive, but like a full seven track album is like very expensive in a studio. So it's always, mm -hmm. it's always great when they can kind of do it on their own and it sounds just as good as like a regular radio track. So that's really cool to hear. Um, now I want to hear, I don't, I've actually never met the both of you before, so I kind of want to hear about your musical journeys and how you got started in music and kind of where you're at with it today. Um, so Eka, can you kind of start us off just telling a little bit about your musical journey? Oh God, um, that was very interesting for me because I'm coming from a country, I'm, I'm from Georgia originally, so I've been living here for around three years now. Hmm. And the understanding of music and becoming a musician in Georgia is a bit different the way they perceive it. So as a musician in Georgia, more or less, you might be singing covers. And hmm. because we speak only Georgian and English is not that common for Georgians to speak. Uh, it's quite a bit difficult. So for me, I started off as a, uh, like a singer uh, of cover songs. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun. I was in a kind of live shows and TV shows and I was singing somebody else's songs. So that was kind of fun time, but it wasn't that fulfilling, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then um, kind of, it was ups and downs because it's going to be long, but just I'm going <laughs> to Right. And I had some kind of issues with my vocal cords. So as a musician, I'm sure that you can kind of understand how stressful journey it was. So 
while I was pursuing my music, I also did my study. So I did my journalism bachelor degree and I did my master's degree in marketing. So while I was trying to sing at the same time, I was doing something else because I wasn't sure what I was doing. Mm. But at the same time, I reached a part that I really started to fall apart as a person because I knew what I wanted to do deep down when I was a kid. And then my voice goes wrong and I'm like, yeah. I don't know what am I doing. So I'm doing everything and nothing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that was literally like four years ago when I had this wake up call that I was like, I cannot do that anymore. I cannot be kind of living this somebody else's life that doesn't feel that like it's mine. So anyways, <laughs> long short, um, I kind of started working on my vocal cords, even though I still have this issue, I started to understand how I can take care of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why can I become more than a singer? why cannot be a songwriter or why I cannot produce my own songs. Mm. So for past two years, I've been really actively working on myself and trying to make up for the time that I missed. Yeah. So right now I'm on this journey that I want to incorporate whatever knowledge I gain from outside of the music industry, let's say even marketing, I found it very useful mm. and try to put all of this together and make sure that whatever I'm creating now, it's mine, but also it has something to say and it also can reach like a bigger audiences. Right. So uh, right now I'm kind of trying to concentrate on pop R&B, mm. kind of mixed with a bit of funk. Nice. Uh, <laughs> <Really> hopefully. <cool. laughs> and so this is uh, kind of something that I'm working on. Right now I'm writing songs and producing. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with uh, other producers and hopefully very soon I'll be kind of releasing uh, singles uh, yeah. very often. So I'm keeping yeah. my fingers crossed and I'm kind of excited. Yeah, yeah it was long, but I had to give you this answer. <laughs> no, no, that's it. okay. <laughs> I've had some people go on for 20 minutes and I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my God. I love to hear this, but like, when are you going to stop talking? So it's all good. Uh, that's really great <laughs> to hear. I'm so happy to hear that you're continuing and you've kind of, even though you had some, definitely some struggles in the middle, which I think everyone faces at some point, they have that that moment, right? Where that kind Absolutely. of revelation. So it's great to hear that you, you powered through and you're doing your own thing now. So congrats Thank on that. You. <laughs> <laughs> now, Wesley, I want to hear about uh, your band. Can you tell us a little bit more about kind of your guys' journey and where you're at today with your music? Yeah. So, um, shoot, where do I start? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's too, too long. <laughs> it's been, it's been, a, it's been long, but I think, um, like for me, I, was I was always interested in music like I always um had it in the back of my mind but it was definitely like in my family it was like oh that's a great hobby mm. and yeah. so when it came time to decide what to do in college um, I realized I just wasn't as happy unless I was doing music and so I figured you know why not combine my music and my education mm -hmm. and that's when I got into uh, I had to try out two years in a row it's a very competitive program and finally got into the commercial music program at BYU and that kind of kick-started me maybe believing in myself a little bit more mm -hmm. and um, I had been in other bands but I finally decided to start like my own project something that I was going to be the front man of yeah. and share my own songs like at, at a more consistent and, and bigger level so um, I started Suit Up Soldier six years ago and we were kind of like a punk rock band oh, um, nice. when we started <laughs> um and you know the, the our first drummer he was like he, his background was more in metal mm -hmm. and uh and then my background was kind of like alternative rock singer songwriter um also kind of a, a little bit of pop punk and, and uh anyway we had eventually gotten around to recording an album and the day after we finished recording that album the entire band quit oh god <laughs> that's so, terrible <laughs> um it was it was the worst so yeah we spent all this time and money in a, in a you know one of like the area's most renowned studios mm -hmm. and i realized that we were lacking like that familial togetherness of a band yeah. and we also didn't didn't really we hadn't worked with the producer so we didn't really know what we were doing and um like you don't really know until i don't know you just don't know what you don't know and and yeah. and <laughs> so we uh 
so I, I decided to adjust. I was like, okay, maybe I'll like take Suit Up Soldier in like the solo direction and maybe mm. take this as a solo artist. But I just knew that for me, I always wanted it to be a collaborative thing. Mm. And so my, my keys player was still involved and he had told me several times like, oh yeah, like this is what I want to do mm-hmm. um, with my future. Like whether I still have another job on the side, um, it's just something I, I want to pursue. And I always knew that I wanted to do that as well. Um, so over the years, we finally recruited more members and have the lineup that we have today. That's like, everyone is involved. It's like a very mm-hmm. familial effort. Like we actually spend time together outside of. And you're actually uh, friends. <laughs> we're actually friends. Yeah. yeah. And not that that's the great. other members weren't, it's just like their goals were very, very different. Yeah. It's really, yeah. it's been a huge change to have everyone involved in the same goal. Um, and now I don't feel like I'm doing everything yeah. because it's just impossible. Like yep. if, if you want to be an independent artist these days, um, you kind of have to be able to run your own label as, as an and artist. Everything. Yeah. That's what's really yeah. cool about the current lineup that we have is that everyone has different skills to be able to contribute to us being basically our own label right. until if and when we, we come across the opportunity to be signed to yeah yeah which can take care of the rest for you so (laughs) yeah Yeah, no that's incredible (laughs) yeah yeah no it's 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 so hard as musicians to be in that position when you're marketing yourself advertising yourself playing the shows also talking to people after the shows and trying to sell yourself and I've (laughs) talked to so many roundtable guests that have said the same thing as you said Wesley like it's just that's honestly the hardest part so that's awesome to hear that you have a band that's supporting you and is, you know, kind of thinking the same way you are. And I know for myself, I have a, my band member, Marissa, who she reached out to a few of you. Um, but, uh, she does another show on as well on our channel, but, um, we're the same. Like we both tried our solo careers. We were doing our own thing. We were hustling on our own and it was so hard. And we both got to that point where we're like, are we ready to quit? But actually joining forces made everything so much easier. And we're both able to really push that drive so I admire when when people can work together and we're friends like you said Wesley like we're really good friends and we actually want to hang out and (laughs) it's great to have that relationship for sure so thank you both for sharing I loved hearing your stories that was great to hear Um, now I want to talk about our topic today which is how music changes you so um, you know before people start music they're usually kind of like different people they're not that you completely change when you do music, but there's a lot that kind of happens and a lot you learn in a very short time about yourself when you start doing this career in music, if you will. Um, so I want to know, this is open to the both of you. Um, what was life like before you did music? I kind of want to hear the backstory of how your, how your life was situated before uh, you started doing music. So Eka, do you kind of want to start us off and let us know what it was like for you? I think I can share much, I guess, more information because my music career was a bit of, it was a bit of different ways. I started mm-hmm. in a different way. So okay. as I said before, singing was fun. Definitely it's still fun because I'm on the first place a singer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, then what I realized when you start creating your own music, I, I, at least this is what I relate to, to your question is that... Yeah. When you start creating your music, I kind of find myself more like I felt powerful and I felt uh, that I was stronger than I thought that I was. I don't know. It's kind of my very personal subjective experience because Mm -hmm. um, at first for me as a singer, I don't know, uh, um, especially girl from Georgia who is coming here. And I can tell you that there's a big difference when you see the culturally, how people perceive music career and music itself. Mm -hmm. So I really went through this very crazy kind of times where I was like, oh my God, there's so much more than I thought that there was. So it was like an absolutely new realm that I was like, oh my God, I'm unstoppable. I don't need to sit back and be like cover singer and copy paste somebody else's song. I can be my own self. It shouldn't be like a full of ego that I also don't like the fact that, oh my God, I'm the one, I'm the musician, I'm going to be the... But the fact of creativity involved in it, it gives you this so much new ideas. And I'm like, oh my God, there, you can add this. And then this comes there. And I guess it made me feel powerful. I've Mm -hmm. never felt so confident in myself ever, even though, like you were saying guys, that it's very like 
it's stressful because yeah. you have to think about creating music and then putting it together, finding right people, producing, and then putting out yourself out there and be vulnerable and showing your true self and be like, oh my God, take me. Yeah. But <laughs> at the same time, I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> at the same time, it's also empowering that you're like, I can be myself. I can create something from mm -hmm. nothing. Basically, it's still nothing. It's our experiences, everything. Yeah. But still, there is something new. So for me, on the first place, is something because it really pulled me out from this very negative and depressive kind of state of uh, state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, anyways, kind of it, it, overall, I can say that music was one of the best things that happened to me, and it gave me so many, so much confidence that I'm like, yeah, that mm. that was the best thing that kind of I've discovered, yeah. rediscovered. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, no, that's, so, yeah. that's great. That's awesome that that's Very kind exciting. of changed your life. Honestly, that sounds like it was a huge thing for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Definitely. Wesley, what was kind of life like for you before you actually started doing music and were interested in starting to do it more seriously? Uh, yeah, I was thinking that I wanted to be a businessman. There was a, a, <laughs> a short, there was a short time that I wanted to be a dentist because dentists Ooh. Pay great money, right? <laughs> they do. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but I realized very quickly that the pursuit of money was just not mm -hmm. something that I really cared about. Mm -hmm. um, if I happen, if I happen upon, you know, fortune while pursuing my dreams, that that's another thing, yeah, but it wasn't awesome. my main goal to be rich, mm -hmm. but rather to be happy. Yeah. And for me, when I was younger, like i when I first picked up the guitar, the first time I ever I picked up a guitar was when I was, I think I was 17, um, maybe maybe 16, 17. I, I didn't really start playing though until I was 18. Mm. I didn't really start writing my own songs until, until then or really getting into music until I was about 18. And for me, it was just a way to cope with the world around me and to navigate this experience of life and yeah, it, it got to a point where like, I felt, I don't even know how to describe that feeling. It's almost like you feel like you owe music and you owe yourself yeah. the, like, man, I, it's so hard to articulate. It's indescribable. <laughs> it's so hard to articulate something yeah. that, that kind of like, in a sense, Eternally. saves your life. Yeah. For, yeah. A lot of musicians are, are very em, uh, empathic. Is that a word? Mm -hmm. uh, just they they feel so many things, and oh. like music is the way to cope and totally. um, to to navigate life life's experiences. So mm -hmm. I think for me, um, like music came in to play, uh, uh, you know, in my teens. But but I it was always like kind of that thing on the side, that hobby on the side that was um, just supposed to be my outlet. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I was like a salesman for, for most of my twenties until I finally realized like, I don't want to be a salesman for the rest of my life. Like, or, or at least working kind of like what Eka said is like, I don't want to be living someone else's life. Mm -hmm. If I was going to sell yeah. something, I wanted it to be, to be my own music. And I wanted to, cre I wanted to be a creator. And so, um, I, I needed to make it a part of kind of my everyday life and not just, uh, something that I'm just going to be on the side. Absolutely. Yeah. I think for most musicians, if we had to like, I, cause my dad has told me so many times, he's like, just be a dental hygienist. You know, you're never going to be Celine Dion, which is like, ouch, first of all, but, <laughs> but which I'm like, whatever, I get it. Like you're, you're older than me. You still live in that, you know, ideology that like money is the only thing to help everybody. Survive. Honestly, <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it's, I understand when people think that way, I'm like, it's fine. But I think it's, it's, it would be heartbreaking. And I think it would crush a lot of musicians if they had to, you know, cave into being a dental hygienist or just a dentist in general, like when they really don't have the passion for it. And you waste so much of your life just doing things you don't want to do. And like for myself, I'm a musician, basically 80% of the time. Um, but my other 20% is working with um, children who are dis like have disabilities. So that to me is still one of my huge passions. I love doing it, but I get to really have 80% of my life being music with which is an incredible gift and I'm so thankful. But I think if you're going to also have a, a part-time job as a musician, try and find a job where you're not miserable or like at least yeah. it's something you enjoy. Like maybe it's music teaching because you still get to be involved with music, right? So I think it's, it's tough. Like it's 
it's such a fine line to really balance between. So it's, it's I yeah, think also it depends strange. on the cultures and how you're kind of uh, taught. You know mm. how you were saying, your father was saying, and also it's ego involved because yeah. sometimes you're like, oh, I don't want to take this very basic job, even though you might be enjoying it, mm -hmm. what people will say. So you have this also ego fight and the cultural and societal fight that what they yeah. expect from you to do, mm -hmm. what you really want to do and what you expect from yourself to do. There's like so much struggle yeah. going on. And uh, totally. I think that's also very kind of stressful time and letting this go mm -hmm. is and I, I always thought that musicians and like people in our journey are the bravest ones because you literally jump without knowing what's yeah. gonna happen yeah because it's very difficult to guarantee that yeah. your music is gonna be like oh it's gonna shine straight yeah away, so. yeah there's yeah. really no promises with it so it's just testing it hoping it works and then if it doesn't like, <laughs> exactly okay, try again pick my feet back up again yeah. <laughs> totally. I think that's a life why are you living then yeah. Life is like for enjoying it and understanding it. But you fail, you get up and you move yeah. on. Yeah. Absolutely. What's interesting is like, yeah. so, and you learn about, about how to kind of mentally, mentally go through these struggles mm -hmm. in, in other experiences in life. Like music definitely uh, was a way to have like an outlet for mm -hmm. all of these struggles, but what really taught me to be a musician was like my my external life experiences like being a salesman it taught me how to take risks and to yeah. um to like do things that were really scary like <laughs> knocking on random people's doors yeah. and uh <laughs> you know and learning how to get them from get off my property or i'll shoot you to where do i sign <laughs> and yeah <laughs> um and so it's really interesting. Like it taught me like sales, sales taught me a lot about psychology and like mm. how I was going to be able to communicate my music properly to a crowd so that they could understand not musically what was going on. And also the, the message of the music. Right. Um, it taught me about risk taking. Um, it taught me that a professional spends 10,000 hours before they really become a professional on something. And so <laughs> I used those experiences to be able to tell myself, okay, maybe, maybe the only reason why musicians fail is because they quit and not necessarily because yep. they weren't good. Honestly, that's such a nice comment. I've thought a lot about that because people mm -hmm. who really achieve, we, we, nobody knows exactly what was happening behind those curtains. You see only like this shining bright side and they yeah. are like dancing and you're like, oh, that lucky. And you don't know those guys <laughs> were grinding like yeah. whole days so and nights. Hard. Yeah. So exactly like not, not giving up is something that makes you kind of achieve what you want because you're mm. going to fail no matter what, whatever you're going to do. Even yeah. if you know how you're thinking becoming a dentist, you're going to have some problems there too. Yeah. So yeah. It's more like not giving up. Yeah. Absolutely. That was nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my next question for the both of you is, do you think that everyone should at least try and learn one instrument in their lifetime? Why or why not? If you think yes or no, what's kind of your thoughts on that? Um, Echo, what do you think? Do you think everyone should learn an instrument at least once in their life or do you think yes, it's worth definitely. the time? <laughs> definitely. Yeah. That, uh, so I grew up in a family that they never believed in me that I could be a singer. I remember that when I would sing, they're like, what are you singing? Mm. So for, for me, I grew up in a family where I've never been exposed to music properly. None of my family members sing. None of them have any connection with music so mm. only thing they would do they might play here in their piano and I remember because I had a good hearing in a sense I could build the music like when I was like very young so they took me for some time to, to play piano but that was it and they never pushed me mm. I'm a bit uh, like angry about that but it's anyways but I feel <laughs> like like knowing and understanding music kind of opens up kind of new ideas for you so yeah. like understanding the theory is a perfect key for you to open these new doors i can play around and i'm still learning because as i said i started kind of very lately but having this knowledge will really open many more doors for you rather than be like oh i'm a good singer i have no clue what's the theory about i have no clue about the piano yeah yeah so yeah my totally. answer is yes. yeah yeah how about you, Wesley? Do you think it's important for at least someone to learn at least one instrument in their lifetime? Yeah, I think there have been studies done that that confirm that learning an instrument actually can, in a sense, make you smarter because you are uh, engaging more neurons in your brain. That yeah, yeah. both sides of your brain open, too. Yeah, that you bring mm -hmm. like, like your left, the left side of your brain is supposed to be like your 
musical side. Yeah. Like, things, like, yeah. Uh, it's kind of where you compute things and then like the right side of your brain is, is your creativity. And when you're engaging both sides, you're opening mm -hmm. like neural pathways or whatever, all this, all these scientific things <laughs> that, that, that um, confirm that learning an instrument actually helps expand your mind and open your mind to be able to learn more things. And I've, I've noticed that a lot of like the wisest and, and like smartest people that I look up to at least have some understanding of, of at least one instrument. Right. <clears throat> and if you can, like if there's always going to be that one instrument that calls you that kind of that you gravitate towards. But um, I would suggest to anyone who wants to get into music and doesn't know which instrument to learn, learn the piano. It's yeah. the only instrument that, yes. that, I feel like, <laughs> only that I feel like I don't have a, a really good grasp on, except yeah. that Western music and modern music is all built around mm -hmm. um, the piano. Yeah. And like theory is built around the piano. And yeah. I, I struggled in school because of not really having a, a, a great understanding of the piano as yeah. most of my peers did. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's teaches you so much discipline learning the piano. Like I started when I was five or something and my mom literally forced me till I was like 18. She's like, you was, <laughs> you can stop when you're done high school. And I was like, okay. But like, I'm so thankful because it's, I talked to so many adults who are like, I wish I had continued, but I just gave up because it was hard. And it was, it's not an easier thing. Like I think guitar is almost easier to pick up for whatever reason, but, and it's more portable a guitar. So you can play it in your room, you can play it anywhere, but yeah. piano is really it's hard. Like it takes so much determination and practice and it's just, ugh, yeah, I just, anyone that can play the piano, I'm like respect. Cause it's like, it's, it's hard. So yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to know what were some immediate changes you noticed in your own life when you started to do music more often? What was something that happened right away when you started to do music? Now I know that's kind of a tricky question, but if you can think on it for a minute, um, maybe that would be like reactions from your family or reactions from your friends and uh, your friends. Maybe it was a career change. Maybe it was a pivot in your, in your busyness. I know for me with like with music, I have no time to, <laughs> I try and still hang out with my friends and family, but it, it definitely takes up a lot of your time. So um, maybe Wesley, I'll start with you this time. Did you notice any immediate changes when you started doing music more seriously? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, um, I noticed that like certain opportunities that didn't totally matter to me kind of started to fall by the wayside mm -hmm. and I started to realize what, what my priorities were. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I was, I was fairly into sports. I, I played a lot of volleyball and volleyball for me was another huge outlet where like I wanted to play in college if I could, mm -hmm. but, um, I actually broke my arm like a mm -hmm. few like a month before, before tryouts, oh. um, I had broken. Cause I, I had, I had tried out for the BYU volleyball team, which is like number one in the nation, kind oh. of a, a ridiculous feat that I, I, I was okay at volleyball, but like I, <laughs> I kind of <laughs> that I pursued it as much as I did. Yeah. But, um, I tried out one year and the coach said, Hey, you're too skinny, bulk up, come back and try out again. So I did, I've spent that next year like weight training and um, eating better. And uh, then I broke my arm like a month before tryouts. And it was kind of like a little call from the universe saying like, hey, you need to focus on music because <laughs> time for both. Like you dedicate your entire life to sports. Yeah. And you also kind of dedicate your entire life to music if you decide to be a musician. It had to be one or the other. And so that was kind of like an immediate change for me. It was like, I as much as I loved sports, it was something that I was able to, um, to make my hobby so that I could, uh, fully pursue music and really feel that fulfillment. Like Echo had been talking about before is like, you feel, right. um, that fulfillment from being who you want to be. Totally. Yeah. That's, that's so incredible to hear how that it, the universe is really calling you and being like, nope, I'm pushing you to do music. You don't get a choice. That's so crazy. Um, Echo, what's something that changed for you immediately when you started doing music or something, an immediate change or something different that happened when you started to do music? I don't know about that one, but one thing I remember when I really decided that I was planning to sing and I remember because I love performing, I think on the first place I love 
people and mm -hmm. like communication basically <laughs> like when i'm on the stage and i have this like hey <laughs> and uh after this very long break like when i had the five years or something that was really long and i was really in dark place and i, I remember it that day i'll never forget because there is this like a live session so you can go there and sing with people and i was like fuck it i don't care mm -hmm. sorry for sorry no it's okay <laughs> i was like i'm going out i need to do something and i remember it felt like some kind of I felt confident again and these like mm. dark thoughts, everything that I had in my head. And I was so confused, even though I was doing like from outside, I was like, this girl is doing masters. She's having life done. Da, da, da. And I'm like, I have no clue. What am I doing? <laughs> and if somebody would have asked me, Eka, what's your goal? I'm like, life is going to show me, I guess. <laughs> Literally that was my answer. And then I'm yeah. going out and I'm performing and I was like, Oh my God, that's it. That's Everything it, yeah. cleared out. And I felt the most confident in myself I've ever felt again, mm -hmm. because there was really long time ago because I would cry and be angry for no reason. And I didn't know exactly what was happening with me. Mm -hmm. So basically like for me, understanding that I'm back into music and I'm can my, call myself musician gives me like, second life in a sense yeah. because i i feel so fulfilled mm -hmm. it's very difficult to explain but no it's that's kind of sense, um, yeah it sounds like you had a huge yeah. emotional change which is kind uh, of the absolutely. immediate change for you that's awesome like that's... was saying that the money wise i'm sorry it's kind of like no, it's okay. you know sometimes you think if i'm gonna study there i'm gonna get a good job and i had pretty good paid job very off like i have mm -hmm. pretty nicely done life from outside perfect and I don't have money problems. I don't have that problems. I don't have, and I'm dying from inside. I was like, what is really mm. kept happening? And yeah. because I went through that path, I was like, yeah, nothing matters if from inside you don't fulfill what you're born for. Yeah. At least that's how it feels for me. Oh yeah. So, yeah. I, I think a lot of celebrities too, that's why they, you see a lot of suicide or like really depressed celebrities because they, yeah, they have everything they want, but inside they're like, this is not as fulfilling as I'd hoped it would be, or this is like exactly. a life that I didn't really want. And it just kind of got forced upon me. Right. So that's, yeah. that's so hard. So hard. Yeah, the life loses its meaning basically because mm -hmm. you get to this phase, you're like, I'm automatically doing like my everyday tasks. Yeah. Uh, and there's no, and also like you were saying, when you're thinking more, your brain develops, your brain doesn't develop because no, no matter how much marketing wise, blah, 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 you are, you get in this, like a loop yeah. doing the same again and no development. Yeah. So it's for redundant. me, that's also yeah. a stressful part. I want to learn. I want yeah. to grow. Basically. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. That's so Music cool to hear. for me, basically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's what I want to do. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That's absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that was actually our last question for the day. We're out of time. I know it goes by so fast. <laughs> um, we're so lucky to have had you both on the show today. If you guys are at home watching this round table uh, with Vienna White, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you can be notified about our shows. We post two shows daily, Monday to Friday. So there's lots of content to watch. If you want to hear this conversation on Spotify, search up the Vienna White podcast or look down below and you'll find where to go. Um, so before we head out, could I get you both to say your um, stage name or your band name and where our audience can find you guys on social media? So Wesley, can you sign yourself out first? Yeah, my name is Wesley Monahan, and I am the singer for Suit Up Soldier. And uh, you can find us on Instagram, Suit Up Soldier underscore, because Suit Up Soldier was taken. Um, and uh, then uh, you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter, you'll maybe see us frequent Twitter about twice a year. Perfect. <laughs> I'm the same way with Twitter. I'm like, oh, I'm not on there, but you can follow me. <laughs> and Eka, can you sign yourself out as well? Uh, so, hi guys, I'm Eka Lucky. You can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, and on <laughs> Spotify. Look, Eka Lucky, your yellow color, it's literally all over the place. So, if you look for Eka Lucky, yellow color, that's me basically awesome <laughs> <laughs> well thank you both so much it was great to meet you today and i hope to hear from you guys soon Bye. thank you i really enjoyed it <laughs> thank you